University of the Business History Group here at Los Andes. Um, we just came back from a very stimulating conversation about the new paradigms and perhaps new frameworks of the discipline. And uh, now for the second session, we have a panel on Latin American business history and the contributions of the business history group here at Los Andes. So I'd like to introduce our very distinguished set of speakers, uh, Rory Miller from the University of Liverpool, Maria Inés Barbero from the Universidad de Buenos Aires, Marco Palacios here sitting next to me from El Colegio de México, and Gabriela Recio from the Business History Group. Before handing over to our speakers, I would just like to remind the audience um, the set of rules for, the, for this session. So each speaker will have around 13 minutes for their intervention. And then at the end, we'll have a Q&A. So you can ask your question directly. You can raise your hand. I will give you a heads up to, to talk. Or you can write the question in the chat, and then I'll read it out loud. And in the case here in this room, we'll, I'll take a list. Out. I'll keep a list. Um, so I think we're ready. And so I'll hand over to our first speaker, Rory. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to Andrea and Carlos for the invitation to speak. It's a real privilege to be asked to contribute to this session. And congratulations to Carlos and his colleagues in Bogota for their 50th anniversary. And hello to all the various friends and colleagues I can see on the screen who I haven't seen for some time. Uh, when you retire, which I did seven years ago, you can erase from your memory all those interminable departmental meetings, meetings with problematic students, even worse meetings with problematic colleagues. But there are some meetings that you're never going to erase. And I remember Carlos visiting Liverpool probably in the late 1980s, and we had a very long uh, lunch in a bistro in uh, in Liverpool, talking about business history, talking about what was happening in Bogota, what was happening in, in, in Britain. And that was followed a couple of years later by an invitation of Carlos in pre-email days to participate in a panel on Latin American business history that he was organizing as part of the annual meeting of CLADEA, which is the Council of Latin American Business Schools in Bogota in 1992. Why start with this? is to stress that for well over 30 years, Carlos and the group of business historians in Bogota have been looking outwards. They haven't been confining their perspective to Colombia. And that 1992 meeting had various outcomes. Uh, there were five participants in that panel. Uh, Carlos talking about Colombia, Mario Ceruti talking about Northern Mexico, Ruth Capriles on Venezuela, uh, Colin Lewis on Brazil, who is on this call, I think, and me on Peru. And one outcome of that meeting was Carlos saying to me, what, what do you think about producing these papers as a book? And we agreed that we should do so, but that we needed to cover Argentina and Chile, as well as the countries that had been covered in the, uh, in the conference panel. So we sent out invitations to contribute to Raúl García Eras in Argentina and Luis Ortega in Chile. The result was a book that was published in, uh, sorry, you're out of focus, um, published in Spanish in Bogotá, 1996. And then we did a translation and it was published in English by Liverpool University Press in 1999. So one outcome was to try and summarize the state of business history in seven of the most important countries in, in Latin America. Second outcome was that Carlos went on to put together a Grupo Ibero-Americano, Iberian-American group, which then incorporated uh, people like Javier Vidal from Alicante, María Inés Barbero from Buenos Aires, and has expanded and expanded since then to incorporate business historians from other Latin American countries. And thirdly, uh, Carlos also was able to use the funding for the Catedra Corona in Universidad de los Andes to invite business historians from elsewhere to come and spend a, a week or so in Bogota, um, doing some lectures, uh, having a lot of conversations with, with colleagues there. And 
so, so in the 1990s, these, these international initiatives began to contribute to the development of business history elsewhere in Latin America. And another stimulating meeting I recall was in Buenos Aires in March 2000, where the Grupo America, Iberoamericano and some others uh, had a meeting with young Argentine business historians, uh, which included Andrea um, 24 years ago. Uh, and that, I think, gave a, an impetus to the development, Marian has made a comment on this, gave an impetus to the development of business history in Argentina uh, that was already underway. So the important point here is that Latin American business history developed from within Latin America, and it developed in an international manner, and this differentiates it, in my mind, from other fields of Latin American history where historians in the North Atlantic tend to have different research issues from historians in Latin America, and historians in Latin America tend to remain within the confines of their own country and don't go beyond the frontiers. And I'm saying this with some feeling after 30 years of teaching Latin American history and seeing the contrast between what North American historians write on it and what Latin Americans write on it but also 10 years as editor of the Journal of Latin American Studies, where we fr frequently had to say to historians, look, this is a really good article, but please, you have to explain why it's relevant to someone in the neighboring country. And that's never been a problem with business, business history articles that came to us, that business historians in Latin America, in my experience, have always tended to have much more international perspective than the mainstream historians. And so the field developed and it was helped by changes in the Latin American context and changes in the in, in the academic context. In Latin America through the 1990s and early 2000s, we had a wave of privatizations that then started to raise questions about how the private sector had developed in the region. Uh, we had opening to foreign direct investment and we had new investors um, like the Spanish banks, other Spanish utility firms. A little later, we had Chinese firms investing in Latin America. And we also had the growth of so-called multilatinas, Latin American multinationals, uh, especially ba those based in uh, Mexico and in Chile. For many countries, there was strong economic growth uh, resulting from the commodities boom. And Patrick mentioned earlier on the forum in Entreprise et Histoire, which was probably 10, 15 years ago. And it's noticeable if you read through that forum that all of us who contributed to it put the expansion of Latin American business history down to these factors. We're more or less unanimous in that. In the academic world at the same time, there was, as has already been mentioned, increasing dissatisfaction with Chandlerian paradigms in the North Atlantic, uh, development of the concept of varieties of capitalism, which Pear mentioned just before the break, I think was very important. Um, that came from international political economy, uh, but it um, really highlighted the possibility that Latin American varieties of capitalism might be rather different from elsewhere. Possibly also the development of commodity chains literature and global what's now called global value chains literature, which showed that there were many different types of business organization engaged in the production and trade of commodities. And the clearest example of that is coffee, which could produ be produced by firms of many different sizes and traded by firms of many different sizes and organizations as well. So it became clear that as one of the people um, in the uh, on the screen put it to me probably 20 years ago, Chandler was irrelevant to Latin America. Chandler had nothing whatsoever to contribute to Latin to our understanding of Latin American business. Latin America had a very different variety of capitalism, and it varied between countries, but it was marked by, in terms of structure and organization, family firms diversified business groups, multinational corporations, and state-owned enterprises dating back, in some cases, to the late 19th or very early 20th centuries. 
And in terms of context, firms in Latin America were operating in a very diff different economic and political context, one that encouraged short-termism, and in many countries, one that meant crisis management to deal with political and policy changes, to deal with problems of inflation and balance of payments issues that led to stop-go cycles in, in many, many countries across Latin America and put business in uh, established businesses in danger, but also provided many opportunities for, for newcomers. Uh, and just as, as an anecdote, I was very struck when I first tried to get access to Unilever's archives 30 years ago and had to be interviewed by senior executives of the firm to check I was OK in terms of being let into the archives. One of them said to me, well, of course, Brazil's very interesting because it's in Brazil that Unilever worked out how to deal with inflation and spread the techniques of dealing with inflation in Brazil across the world. And I heard the same sort of story from ICI Duperial, uh, uh, executives in Argentina some time later, that it had been in Argentina where the key elements of inflation management were worked out for a large multinational chemicals firm. So to sum up what I've said so far, I'd stress the international nature of Latin American business history that was stimulated by Carlos and by the other um, Latin American business historians who joined him in the Ibero-American group in the 1990s and early 2000s. That's encouraged comparisons. It's encouraged learning across borders. It's encouraged people to learn from what, one another in terms of ideas and techniques. And it's that international environment in which research has developed that I think makes it very different from many other subfields of Latin American history. Uh, I think I've got about two minutes left, so I'm going to take those two minutes to say where do we go from here, and please forgive me for trespassing on the on the next panel. First, I think the history of management in Latin America has lagged behind the development of business history in Latin America. We've seen some very welcome recent contributions from Carlos and Rolf and from Andrea and others on the history of management education in Latin America. Amongst other things, reading those papers, it's shown up the importance of professional interest groups and associations, and those are areas that would benefit, I think, from much more research. Some of these interest groups and associ professional associations like civil engineers or mining engineers go back well over, over a century. And I think it's a commonplace now in Chilean business and economic history that the uh, state-owned enterprises in Chile between the 1930s and the dictatorship in the 1970s were frequently the creation of professional engineers. And second, arising out of that history of chambers of commerce, stock exchanges, industrial and agricultural pressure groups uh, also uh, could do with more research, I think. But um, certainly in the Peruvian and Chilean cases, uh, I would argue this. Third possibility, connect the history of business with the history of technology, partly in terms of Latin American initiatives. Most of the early electrification of Latin American cities was undertaken by Latin American entrepreneurs using overseas technology. It's only later that British and North Americans come in and purchase the early companies. But also connecting business history of business with the history of technology raises questions about its social impact. Been a couple of articles recently on the social impact of telephones in Latin America. Uh, there's been a lot on the social impact of cars, as well as on the development of multinational um, motor vehicle enterprises. But I've se seen nothing on the creation of the long distance bus companies that dominate internal transport in Latin America. Uh, and I've seen nothing on the micro enterprises that in many Latin American cities run commuter transport. Uh, so... There's a lot of, of possibilities there. 
in, internal civil aviation is another area that could do with more research. Internal aviation helps to create a domestic tourism market. And also, well, recently, IT. And finally on this, and this is echoing some of the points that Jeff made very early on about business and the environment. The social and environmental impact of the monoculture of commodities like bananas in Central America, Colombia, and Ecuador, or more recently, palm oil in various Latin American countries, obviously has a huge environmental impact, as anybody who's driven through palm oil plantations will know. You never see any wildlife. Um, it's true in Malaysia, and it's true in Costa Rica. Um, but also, in environmental terms, the pollution caused by mining and oil enterprises over more than a century. We know that Shell and Esso between them polluted Lake Maracaibo. But try and find a business historian writing about that, and it becomes very, very difficult. Same is true of copper mining in Mexico, Peru, Chile. Copper mining not only has a huge environmental impact, but it has a huge impact on the health of workers and the surrounding com uh, communities. I think if you do a literature search, you can find more on the envir environmental impact of illegal and informal gold mining and the health and impact of informal and illegal gold mining at present day than you can on the formal mining and petroleum uh, exploitation <laughs> companies or by state-owned enterprises through the 20th century. So I'm out of time. Thank you for your attention. I hope I've been able to feed something into the discussion. Thank you very much, Rory, for uh, for your compre comprehensive overview of the development of history and the ways in which the political and economic context sort of change its direction and also the ways we can maybe perhaps move forward in in our agenda for the next few decades um our next speaker is maria ines barbero so maria ines your, the floor is yours I am sharing, <laughs> but I, I don't see my, do you see my? We, we can see the presentation, but yes. maybe you can enlarge it a bit more. I cannot see it. Why? Wow. My God. Uso compartido de pantalla. Lo puede, lo puede, allá abajo en el, abajo a la derecha. Sí, sí. Abajo a la derecha. Compartido. David. A ver. Abajo a la derecha. Ahí hay, lo... hay como una copita de vino para eso. Me pone, estás compartiendo y no se ve. Oh my God. Eh, no, sí, podemos ver. Ustedes sí. Yo no. Bueno, voy a tratar de hacer. Así, así podemos ver. No te preocupes que sí okay. podemos ver. I sí. will try to. To try to. Well, do it in the best mode no sé. possible. No uh, my presentation <laughs> is about um, Latin American business history and the contribution of the Grupo Historia y Empresariado. Mm? Um, well, first of all, I, I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation to take part in this event and congratulate the entire Grupo de Investigación, Historia y Empresariado, and especially its main promoter, Carlos Davila who has made so many crucial um, contributions to the development of business history in Latin America. During my 10 minutes, I will try to point out, to point out some milestones and key issues in the trajectory of business history in Latin America, as well as some of its main present challenges, pointing out the role of Carlos Davila and the Grupo Historia y Empresariado. Firstly, at least uh, three main phases can be identified in the evolution of the discipline. Uh, you can see uh, the, 
uh, the, the three phases in my <coughs> slide. Um, the, the first phase, the preliminary phase, uh, is a, is a phase in which the first contribution by historians and social scientists were published with much emphasis on the study of regional elites, on the role of business in economic development, and on multinational enterprises. It was a period with few links to the mainstream of business history, and the main theoretical frameworks were the theories of development, imperialism, and dependency. In 1974, uh, uh, the group of Historia y Empresariado was born at the Universidad de los Andes. It was the first center of its kind created in Latin America by Enrique Ollastri, Manuel Rodriguez, and Carlos Dávila. Um, they focused their research on regional entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, power, business, elites, and development, and company and organization history. But they also began to reflect on the main features of Latin American business history, reflections which would be later included in various publications about the state of the art coordinated by Carlos Davila. I think the problem is that I have to uh, two, two computers open. Um, well, um, a second phase of expansion and recognition of business history as a deep disciplinary field uh, were uh, from 1985 to uh, the end of the 20th century. Um, this phase can be characterized as the takeoff of the Latin American business history in which it acquired the status of a recognized discipline within the academic studies. It was favored by the new historiographic paradigms that privileged the study of the actors and their strategies, and by a greater openness to the study of entrepreneurship in a context of many changes in Latin American economies, uh, in which, uh, to which uh, Rory make reference, made reference. Um, research, publications, and the, and the presence of Latin American business historians in national and international conferences multiplied, while personal and institutional networks were intensified among Latin American, European, and North American colleagues. Research groups were formed in different countries and universities led by Latin Amer pioneer Latin American business historians. And in the second half of the 1990s, three key books were published. Historia de Empresas y Desenvolvimiento Económico, compiled by Tom Tomás Merzani and Ricardo Marañao. Empresas e Historia en América Latina, coordinated by Carlos Dávila, and Rory Miller, Miller in the English edition, and Historia de las Grandes Empresas en México, compiled by Carlos Marichal and Mario Cerruti. And Big Business of the Wealth of Nations included a chapter of my other shifts on the Argentine case. The third phase it was a uh, a phase of maturing of Latin American business history and of new challenges since the beginning of the 21st century. It was a period of increasing international visibility of Latin American business historians with publications in international journals, participation in international conferences, and integration into international networks. The Grupo Iberoamericano de Estudios Empresariales e Historia Económica was created in 2006, promoted by Carlos Dávila for Colombia, Mario Ceruti for Mexico, and Javier Vidal Olivares for Spain, and later joined by Argentina and Peru. And this group meet every year in workshops held alternatively in each of five countries. The period saw also the involvement of new generations of Latin American business historians 
who contributed to the expansion and renovation of the field, making research on new topics and offering new methodological approaches in an international context of renewing business history, debating its identity and its future, as the previous presentations stressed. Uh, these are some relevant books published in this period, starting with Empresas y Empresarios en la Historia de Colombia, coordinated by uh, Carlos Ávila and the Grandes Empresas en Argentina, by Andrea Luch and Norma Lenciotti. Andrea is uh, a member of the group of Historia y Empresariado. In this period, uh, comparative history was progressing with many contributions uh, and uh, joint projects with Latin American and um, European uh, or, or American uh, or North American uh, colleagues. Mm? You, you can see here uh, different uh, topics, uh, the impact of local globalization, of uh, business groups, uh, family business, and this is a, a very important uh, recent publication about uh, Historia Empresarial in America Latina. And also in this period, uh, journals and bulletins were published and virtual forms of communication were born. Um, the research topics over, uh, over the course of four decades, research topics have been defined which reflect some of the main features of Latin American companies and Latin American entrepreneurs and their context, combining approaches from business and social history. Among them, uh, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship, and still today there is a, a debate about how to nominate uh, business history in America Latina, historia empresarial or historia de empresas entrepreneurial history or business history. Um, other topics are very important, so family films, entrepreneurial families, big business and business groups, business networks, state-owned companies, foreign companies, business and the states, business interest associations, and labor and the firm. Uh, these topics were in general, not, not all, but uh, in general, far from the organizational synthesis, but near to the alternative approaches in business history. Um, new topics and approaches have also been added in, in the last years or last decades, especially since the turn of the century, such as the study of law patents, trademark management, management education, profitability, corporate social responsibility, Latin American multinational, business and dictatorships, small and medium enterprises, micro enterprises, enterpri entrepreneurship and informality, business strategies in violent context, gender and business, biographies, and, uh, and many others. Um, and new approaches include, for example, network analysis of the building of historical rankings to identify uh, the big business uh, in, in, in Latin American countries. In this period, we, we had also uh, two key milestones. Uh, one of them was the publication of uh, the paper by by Gareth Austin, Carlos Ravilla, and Jeffrey Jones, the alternative business history businesses in emerging markets uh, in business history review in uh, 2017. Um, and uh, this uh, was a, a very seminal article because it um, included the Latin America business history into the emerging countries' uh, business history, uh, a new identity uh, and new um, opportunities for Latin American business history. And another uh, key milestone was the, cre the creating emerging markets project that started in 2007 
uh, led by Professor Jeffrey Jones, which involved uh, Andrea Luke, and um, it was uh, um, a, a project in which many, many uh, Latin American um, business people were uh, interviewed. Um, to finish uh, with the presentation, I think I am okay with the time. Um, I identified some challenges of Latin American business history, um, only some because uh, time is brief. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of these challenges is for Latin American business history is to preserve its identity, oh, it, all these topics that are really um, topics uh, connected with, with our reality, but uh, this preserving its identity uh, may be, no, this, 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 uh, this preserving ident identity may combine with engaging in global debates. Uh, there are still few, very few Latin American historians willing to do so. Um, another challenge is to assert itself as part of the business history of emerging markets while remaining connected to the business history of developed countries. Uh, many of the topics that uh, Jeff and others uh, mentioned very previously um, are very developed in, uh, in, in developed countries and not still very uh, discussed in, in Latin American business history. I think we need to value the contributions that Latin American business history can offer to the study of business activity in turbulent and volatile contexts with high levels of inequality, informality, or violence. And who are entrepreneurs in, in, in Latin America? We have big business, big, big business groups, multilatinas. We have a lot of little entrepreneurs in the informal sector. Um, another challenge is to value the study of uh, how Latin American business history offer uh, the possibility of st the study of sectors that have been neglected by mainstream business history. Some examples, agriculture, agribusiness, low quality service in the post-industrial society, informal entrepreneurship. Um, and uh, we, we have to, to, to have always in mind the, the need to contributing to the understanding of Latin American countries past and present from the specificity of business history. And uh, to, to finish, um, I think that Latin American business history can offer new topics and insight to the discipline, but it, it's, it still needs uh, more theory in our research, uh, promoting the dialogue between theory and history, overcoming the descriptivism. There, there are many, many topics in which the dialogue with theory is very, very interesting, an example, uh, a topic I studied, uh, multinational corporations, uh, the difference between um, classic multinationals, new multinationals, uh, what the study of, Lat of the history of Latin America multinational can contribute of the, of the building of a theory. Um, it also needs to progress in interdisciplinary research and comparative history. And it needs to progress in the institutionalization of the discipline following the path of the Universidad de los Andes. Institutionalization uh, always uh, help to develop research, teaching, and the creation of knowledge. And my last uh, uh, my, my last words are the congratulations uh, for my dear colleagues of the Grupo de Investigación Historia y Empresariado. Thank you, Mara Inés, for a, a very interesting presentation, which complements Rory's previous presentation. Um, you highlighted three main phases of the development of the field in Latin America. 
and you covered which are the main research topics, but also perhaps the new topics. And I think we can talk about the challenges in the Q&A. So now I, I would like to introduce Marco Palacios, who is next. <coughs> Marco, thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to, to talk on, on teaching a uh, historian empresarial <coughs> in Latin America. The role of the Grupo de Historia Empresarial, ahora Historia y Empresarial, lo voy a llamar el grupo, is widely recognized in the network of experts in the field, as well as the leadership of Carlos Davila. It is a privilege to belong to this group. Precisely because of the learnings I gained as a member of the grupo, today I can draw a comparison between my teaching experiences at the Colegio de Mexico and the Facultad de Administración de la Universidad de Los Andes. First, I would like to highlight uh, two obvious differences. A, though both institutions claim to be elite forgers, the meaning is quite different. These institutions belong to countries that have different situations in the transitions from substitute, substitute, uh, substitutive in industrialization um, uh, to the opening of the globalized capitalism. This entails rethinking of paradigms like Western modernization theories versus Latin American dependency theories and therefore of curricular uh, plans. B, common to both Mexico and Colombia is the presence of drug trafficking, a great paradigm of contemporary fusion of market and violence, an issue that I will exclude from, for the brevity of this presentation. Sophie's is for now to mention my essays on palm oil criminal entrepreneurs in the context of the Pax Uribiana, the first uh, draft I, I presented it in a Iberian conference organized by Carlos here at the Universidad de Los Andes many years ago. And the piece with my colleague Monica Serrano on drug trafficking and the state in Mexico and Colombia. Colmex, El Colegio de Mexico, was created in the 40s with the aim of strengthening the Mexican state by offering trained professionals to the Banco de Mexico, the Ministries of Finance and Foreign Affairs, the Consejo Nacional de Población, and to analyze and seek solutions to the challenge of accelerated and chaotic urbanization. Later on came the questions of gender and environmental studies. Thanks to the influence of the Spanish exile, Colmex developed humanistic areas in the field of linguistics and history. I belong to the History Center Estudios Históricos. While Colmex is a public university, about 500 students, about 200 full-time professor, professors, in which tuition fees are zero, on top of which all students receive a reasonable maintenance scholarship with a commitment to dedicate themselves exclusively to studying, the elites of Uniande seem circumscribed to the social class elite without denying or even promoting individual upward mobility. It is arguably elitist in a liberal philosophical sense. Uniande is a secular and private university in which the high cost of tuition restricts access. Hand in hand with my colleagues of the Grupo, I taught for many years in underwriting uh, courses, MBAs, and uh, these special courses of presidentes and gerentes de empresas. There are always uh, teams of monitores, like uh, uh, teaching assistant, I think, in, in the United States, and just as important, the courses should follow protocols that make the teaching task very time consuming. Uh, that is preparation of logistics, of classes, office hours, e e exams throughout the semester, grades, and so on. There is, however, a lot of scope for pedagogical creativity. I, I, I just want to remember here in this moment, the success 
of um, Luis Fernando Molina, a colleague, who caught the attention of apathetic students discussing the news of the day, preferably from the business world. Did the students understand the importance of business processes as historical processes? This is an open question. Historia empresarial is one subject among many in the prolific curricular architecture of Latin American universities. Perhaps in MBAs, apart from broadening cognitive horizons, there could have been a better reception of the historicity of managerial and business practices. If, for instance, students of MBAs grasp the meaning of historical context of violence, dispossession of land, repression and assassination of trade union leaders, the group of program could have a positive impact on professional development. Finally, it seems to me that the Grupo successfully broke here in Colombia the canon of seeing the country from Bogota. It embraced different ways and methods of understanding the country's region, regions and large cities. This also involved, build, uh, involved building relationships with academics from other parts of the country. Though I had Venezuelans and Panamanians,